Welcome to another Fish Report Live. Thanks for waking up with us on this Valentine's Day morning. I'm Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. We're your host back in the sound room. It's a couple sweethearts with TK and Heavy D. We'll talk to them a little bit later in the program. And, of course, out in studio are it's Kobe and Kearns. Always excited to talk to them. And, Ken, I see you got your Made for More coffee cup this morning ready to go. And, uh, you know, earlier this week I heard that we had a former FRL guest, uh, Troy Coach, Paul Bremigen actually reached a career milestone, didn't he? Yes, he did, Craig. Uh, it was really neat to see uh, the other night. He coached his 800th basketball game, Craig. 800 games. That's an awful lot of games. You know, he was the head coach for the Rushi Raiders for, what, 31 years, I think it was. Did a great job building that Rushi program to what it is today. Uh, I got great respect for the man. Uh, you know, he's a fine member of the Rushi community, Craig. So congratulations to not only to Coach Bremigen, but his wife, Joyce, for, uh, for putting up with all those basketball games. And I would assume uh, safe bet. Craig, she has attended the majority of those basketball games herself. So uh, congratulations once again to Coach Bremigen. Craig, uh, yeah, I got myself a good cup of coffee here this morning. It's a special day. It's Valentine's Day. It's a good thing our show's in the morning. We all got big plans tonight. And uh, we're going to have a big interview here in just a few minutes, and that's with the head coach of the Anna Lady Rockets, and that's Jeff Maurer. He's a 1999 alumni of the Anna school he's in his second year craig he's done an outstanding job with the lady rocket program in just two years craig he's amassed 35 wins against just 11 losses really looking forward to talking to jeff about his chances in the postseason and what it's going to take to get through that tough division three sectional yeah it should be a lot of fun talking to him and uh, doesn't quite have 35 years in like coach bremison but he does have a couple years in so anxious to talk to him about that anxious to talk about that girls tournament but in boys action can still have a little less than a week to wrap up the regular season including the scal race which is uh still a little interesting isn't it yes it is craig you know if you'd asked me a couple weeks ago i would have never thought that the uh, makeup game between Anna and Rushi would have Shelby County League implications on a Tuesday night after the regular season is completed. Well, guess what, Craig? It's looking like it will. And what a night that's going to be when Anna comes over to Claire C. Navo Gymnasium to take on the Rushi Raiders, who are sitting in third place right now. And uh, the Jackson Center Tigers, of course, playing tremendous basketball right now. They knocked off Anna. They knocked off uh, defending state champ Marion Local. You know, hats off to Coach Scott Elker and his team over there. Craig, they find a way to win. They are a tough, tough basketball team, and they've made this Shelby County League race quite interesting, which will make it for a real interesting makeup game come next Tuesday night at Rushi High School. Yeah, and I know before the show started here this morning, we were talking a little bit off air about uh, boys tournament action, and we won't uh, get into that tonight. Excuse me, this morning we'll wait till next week to talk about that, but uh, going to be a lot of fun talking about tournament. But we'll let that regular season wrap up here, like I said, in a little less than a week. But let's talk some tournament action. For that, we'll go out to Studio R, talk to Kobe and Kearns this morning. Guys, good morning. I know you've been waiting to talk tournament here for a couple weeks now. It's finally here, isn't it? Yep. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Feeling the love for this basketball draws we got up here. Finally getting games kick started next week here at. Sydney, Wapak, and Covington. Yeah, well, listen. Let's let's talk about that Southwest D four region. But let's uh, let's break down the sectionals. And, and for that, we'll start up in that Wapak district, the Wapak Upper. Let's just start there, work our way down. What are you guys seeing? Well, I'm seeing uh, the two through four seed and a very dangerous six seed in Marion Local. The number two in the Oxville team, very good team. This team was knocked off by Rushi just the other week at the barn over there in New Knoxville. Had a chance to see him play early in the season. Um, and they actually they were playing New Bremen that night. New Knoxville's uh, led by Coach Hegemeyer over there, not Dan Hegemeyer. It's his brother. Very good team. Have some good players over there. Aaron Scott averages around five assists per game. Megan Jurassic, an inside player, a post there. And they might have a tough second round with New Bremen there. 
New Bremen, a very good team. Uh, Coach Burden does fantastic job. I watched him play three times in December. They've got some great players led over there by senior Kelly Naylor, and they're going to be a very dangerous team. Along with St. Henry, I haven't had the chance to see them play, but I know they're having one of their best seasons in a while. And Marion's dangerous as well. They got a, a couple of good players by the name of Elena Pullman and Natalie Raithman. Um, yeah, like you said, I like that Marion team a lot coming out. At, although they're the number 60, they're still a solid team. They had three wins last year and coming off a tremendous season this year, taking Versailles to, I think it was double overtime early in the season and having pretty solid wins throughout. They only lost by nine to St. Henry in the regular season. So that matchup for St. Henry really isn't a walkover. Although they're having a great season, they're still going to have that first that they're going to have the buy and then play Marion. That's still a tough team. So it's a tough, it's a it's a tough section overall for these teams. But I s still see New Knoxville coming out. Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with New Bremen coming out. Um, I think they're just a little bit of a mix. I think New Knoxville is very senior heavy. Um, All right. And now next, going on to the other um, Wapak section. This one looks might look a little obvious um, with Minster here. Um, you know, they've got Fort Recovery, who could be an underdog. They did play them in, I believe, the district semifinals or district finals last year. Having a little bit of a down year. But I believe they did have a, a close game with Tri-Village. So don't count out this Fort Recovery team. And, a, and even if it ends up being a close game, I mean, don't be shocked. This Indians Indians team is, is a solid team. Um, Yeah, it's obvious Minster's the heavy favorite in this sectional. But Fort Recovery coming in with kind of a chip on their shoulder. They gave them a run last year early in the, like you said, the sem the uh, the semi districts, but Minster's obviously favored. Um, they got their eyes on the st uh, the state championship back to back. So if they look over these guys, Fort Fort Recovery could definitely give them an unpleasant ending. All right, guys, let's work our way down, get down to Troy now, and a, a few more teams that we're familiar with in that Troy one upper. Well, in that Troy one upper, you look at it, and we we see the uh, we see the uh, Mechanicsburg Indians were the first ones to really go after the. Fort Laramie Redskins. Now that that was the big thing. It, is you know Fort Laramie's the heavy uh, betting favorite here. There's no doubt about that. So who is going to be the first uh, team to go after them? It is Mechanicsburg. Don't know a whole lot about them. Uh, I knew they've had some Dodanes. I believe we had a Dodane coach on the past here, <laughs> long time ago, back in the infancy of FRL, um, and just a lot of other teams that are hoping to get tournament wins. Um, Fairlawn. We know they, they've had a, a great turnaround season. I'm hoping they get a big tournament win for their first time in a while for Coach Cathcart over there. Um, but it should be a Fort Laramie Mechanicsburg. It should be a, um, it should be Laramie coming out here if I had to put my money on it and going to the districts for the second year in a row. Yeah, no doubt Fort Laramie is definitely the heavy favorite. Mechanicsburg, I think Rushi played them a couple years ago, but they were young. Uh, they still get, they still gave Rushi some some trouble. They're fast. They're, they don't have that much height to them, but they can get the ball up and down the floor, kind of like uh, Fort Laramie. So they could give them a run for their money a little bit in that sectional uh, final, but still it's probably Laramie's to win all the way. All right, guys, and working our way down, let's check out that Troy 2 upper. Yeah, looking at this Troy 2 upper, Legacy Christian added to – this sectional this year throws a wrench because they come in with an 18 and 2 record. They've played some good teams like CJ and Alder out of the Greater Catholic League. Um, they have an 18 and 2 record, and they're going to play House in the first round. And Craig and I, we we called that game last week when Rushi Girls played Houston. Um, they they've pieced together some good quarters. The big thing for House, they need to play a complete ball game if they want to get the upset. Riverside sitting there with a the bye. Then you go up to Rushi. They play Layman. I have saw Lehman girls play twice. Lehman, they don't like to shoot a whole lot on the outside. They like to re uh, rely on their inside scoring. Carly Edwards, one of their seniors. Um, um, there's a Lauren McFarland over there, too, who is, I remember was another one of their high scorers when I called their games. So if they can get on the inside and score, that will, will win the game for Lehman. But that's uh, no easy task there with Larissa pulling on the inside. Then you got Bakken's waiting in the second round. Bakken's another decent team. They've got some young young players like Carmen Huker and Boston Paul. Haven't saw them play since December when Craig and I went over to the uh, the uh, Coliseum there over in Bakken's and called that game. Um, I think Rushi should get through the sectional. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, not knowing Legacy Christian a whole lot. This is one of the few times I'm going to give the Raiders the hometown bias because I just don't know Legacy Christian a whole lot. But I can see Bakken's and maybe Houston has a dark horse in here. 
Um, yeah, um, all these teams, they've had their highs and they've definitely had their lows in this season. It's not been really uh, a solid season for all these teams. They've, they've had their good games. They've had their bad games. But it's going to be – it could be really anyone's game. But if I had to bet on it, I'll see Rushi and Legacy Christian um, in, these, in the semifinal games. With uh, Legacy Christian, I checked out their roster. Their tallest girl is a 5'10". So if, if Rushi can uh, get it inside to Larissa, I think they could run away with it. But I don't know how they are defensively overall. If they can work something to keep it away from Larissa, as much as possible i think legacy christian could definitely get out of the sectional all right guys and let's move down to the troy two lower what do you have there yeah this troy troy two very interesting this will be the team that comes out at that rushi legacy christian bakken's sectional will come and face in the district that's led by number two covington now they're looking for their third straight district appearance led by sammy whiteman they won the districts last year and ended up losing to fort larmy and we could honestly, if you look at the bracket as a whole, be heading for them same four teams we had last year in the same exact format if they all come through and win their districts in Tri-Village, Minster, Fort Laramie, and Covington. Um, I think Covington, obviously their biggest challenge is Arcana, who I actually did not know was Division Four until now. They're Division th uh, Three in guys. Um, surprised to see Troy Christian down there as well. Don't know a whole lot about him. But Arcanum can definitely be a dark horse here. I know uh, they beat Rushi the other week. Um, they're a solid team. I know they got Carter Gray's sister plays over there. They got a girl named, by the name of Kayla O'Daniel, I believe, that plays over there. But I'm going to take Covington in here. Uh, I just like Sammy Whiteman too much. Um, don't know a whole lot about the supporting cast. Um, I think Covington will go as far as Sammy Whiteman can take them necessarily. Um, yeah, that's true. Kef, uh, Covington's definitely riding on Sammy Whiteman. I got a chance to watch Arcanum when they played Rushi. Arcanum can light it up from outside, but I think they, they kept it close with Rushi. Rushi had a lot of turnovers that game, played a lot of sloppy basketball, but no doubt Arcanum's uh, the heavy favorite to maybe upset Covington, so you'll see those two in the sectional final. Um, if Arcanum can make a run, get a couple, um, uh, hit a lot of shots against um, Covington and contain Sammy Whiteman, they could definitely get out. But overall, I'd say Covington's your heavy favorite for Sammy Whiteman. Yeah, I like that covington Arcana matchup in the final two, guys. Uh, you remember Arcanum played Tri-Village just a couple weeks ago, played them very close as well. So uh, one more bracket to talk about. We're going to skip the Troy 3 upper and go straight to the Troy 3 lower. Those are teams we're more familiar with. Uh, what do you see there, guys? Yeah, I see Tri-Village here, no doubt. I'm surprised to see a lot of those teams go away. Bradford should be the team that should challenge them in the sectional finals. But I think um, Tri-Village has got the second easiest sectional to get through here compared to Fort Laramie. They've been playing without Trisha Porter all year. They got the Downing sisters on the inside. This team looks really good, and they're playing without Porter. So even imagine her when they get back her back next year. I hear they got an excellent junior high program, and they play Rushi tonight actually in a kind of tournament tune-up game. Should be a fantastic game. I expect Tri-Village to be in that regional, no problems. Uh, yeah, definitely with that Tri-Village team, we've been talking about them all year, about the Downing Twins, and even though they don't have Siler in the game with them, with her, she's even up there. They're even more of a deadly team, so they'll definitely get out of this sectional, and it'll be that same regional uh, matchup with those four teams we've been talking about all year. All right, guys, great stuff. Thanks for that. We're out of time, but it uh, sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun come tournament time. Ken, we got 30 seconds here. You know, that Tri-Village game that Kobe mentioned playing Rushi tonight. Do you expect to see anything from uh, either team tonight, seeing as it's a tournament warm-up game? Basically? I, I think you're going to see uh, I think you're going to see their best shot, Craig. I think Rushi uh, could, could use a big win to get some momentum to going into the postseason. You know, uh, Coach Timmerman and his girls, they've had a nice season, but uh, – you know, a lot of times when they when they play the, the the higher level teams, Craig, they have not been able to either a compete or b win. And uh, you know, so I, I think uh, Rushi's going to lay it all out. Tri Village, uh, possibly on the other hand, they may be a, a lot of uh, uh, you know just a lot of uh, basic stuff from them. Yeah, well, Rushi's playing their last regular season game tonight, and Anna is playing their first tournament game tonight. We're going to talk about that after the break, but stay right there. When we come back, we will talk to Anna head coach Jeff Maurer.
And welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Before the break, we were breaking down that girls D4 tournament. Now we're going to talk a little D3, and that brings us to our next guest. He's been around Anna Athletics for a long time. Ken, I know you remember him because he was the longtime junior high boys coach over there. As well as that, he's coached football, track, cross country, a little bit of everything. And he's actually been coaching the last two years, the varsity girls over there at Anna. During that time, he's accumulated an impressive record of 35 wins versus just the 11 losses, including an amazing 19-5 and five in the SCAL. We welcome to the program now Jeff Maurer. Coach, thanks for joining us on Fish Report Live. Thanks for having me, guys. Listen, I was just mentioning uh, that you were the longtime junior high boys coach over there. And, and, and Coach, you know, I have a son that uh, was an eighth grader, just wrapped up his junior high season last week. And you know what? I'm already missing it. So I, I wanted to ask you, is there anything that you miss uh, uh, with junior high sports versus varsity sports that you're coaching now? Yeah, yeah. to be honest with you, I, I just enjoy uh, being in the gym regardless of whether or not they're, they're junior high or high school kids. Um, obviously, there's a there's a significant difference in the time commitment, especially in the off season. But uh, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. Uh, I'm sure my wife misses my junior high coaching days. Is <laughs> there there certainly was a lot less film being watched in our living room every night. <laughs> Well, listen, Coach, your, your girls just completed a, a really great regular season. You finished 16-4 and four overall, uh, but you only got 20 games in because of, they have a couple cancellations from teams from the Southwest Buckeye League, uh, Middletown Madison this past weekend, as well as uh, Waynesville back in mid-January. And considering uh, Waynesville just finished the season undefeated at 21-0, and 0, is that one of those games you kind of wish maybe you could have played? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the weather's kind of been a nightmare for a lot of teams this season, but uh, uh, we, we were definitely disappointed to lose that game with Waynesville. Uh, we scheduled them uh, knowing that it, it'd be a great game and an opportunity for us and, and our program to get better, but uh, but things just didn't work out this year. Um, both of us uh, really had a full schedule of games late in the season, and uh, rescheduling league games sort of took precedence over those non-league opponents, so Hopefully the weather will cooperate next year and we can uh, we can get them back on our schedule. Coach, uh, good morning to you. Ken Francis here. Uh, the fans over at Rushi have got a chance to see your Lady Rockets uh, twice this year. Uh, fortunately, you're D3, so we don't have to worry about seeing you a third time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the first time you came over here and Ella Dosek dropped 30 on us, the, the second time we play you, uh, we pretty much shut her down, but uh, Kip Rowland and Lauren Bornhorst combined for 32 uh, you know, have you had different people stepping up for you like this all season long, or is this just unique? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've got three or four girls who have really stepped up and, and provided a fairly consistent scoring for our team this year. Uh, Lauren Barhorst, you mentioned, uh, Ella Dosek, uh, Bria Cook, and, and Kiplin Rowland are all averaging somewhere between 8 and 10 points a game. Um, all four of them have had some, some big games, like you mentioned, for us this season, but uh, – but we've got some other girls who've really been critical to our success uh, without scoring the basketball. Uh, Michaela Ambus is, is sort of our defensive stopper and our point guard. And uh, Mary Landis comes off the bench for us and, and provides uh, quality minutes and, and really an outstanding spark of energy when she comes on the floor. So it, it definitely takes a, a lot of girls in, in various roles in order to be successful. Coach, listen, uh, you know, you're one of the top teams in the Shelby County League this year, and, uh, you know, the good news for you and the bad news for the other schools is that you've only got one senior, and uh, that's Bria Cuck. Uh, the Raiders played you on senior night over there at Anna. Uh, what has she done for the Lady Rocket program over the years, and how important has she been to uh, helping you with just a couple years of coaching under your belt at the varsity level? Yeah, yeah I, I can't say enough good things about what Bria's meant to us uh, not only has Bria provided outstanding three-point shooting for our team this season, but uh, her leadership has really been exactly what you'd expect from a senior. Um, uh, she's not the loudest or most vocal person in the gym. That's just not her personality, but, but she definitely has led by example. Um, she's always the first one in the gym, the first one in line to run different drills. Um, she's just got, kind of got a, a real positive, uh, calm temperament. Um, she, just, she doesn't allow herself to get too high or too low. And, and that kind of consistency uh, is, is important in the game of basketball. So we're, we're definitely going to miss Bria, uh, Bria next next season. Coach, uh, let's talk a little bit about the tournament trail. Kicks off tonight. Uh, you open up in the Covington uh, sectional. Um, you take on the Dixie Greyhounds in your first game. Uh, you know, you come in there. Uh, you're the number three seed overall. Um, 
what's it going to take to get out of this sectional? Because I look at the bracket, and in the upper part of the bracket is a big name, the Versailles Lady Tigers. You've already beat them once this year. I'm sure you're not looking past Dixie or Greenan or Milton Union, but what's it going to take for the Lady Rockets to get out of this sectional? Yeah, no, it, you know, it sounds cliche, but you definitely have to take it one game at a time when you get to the tournament play. Uh, you know, I know I know our girls are probably sick of hearing it, but uh, but we've we've got to play solid fundamental defense and, and really just execute the the little things that we've worked on all throughout the throughout the year. Um, you know, when you reach tournament uh, tournament time, there's there's really no secrets about what teams do. Um, it's uh, if you're going to be successful, it really comes down to who can execute those things that they do best. So. Um, hopefully we can we can manage to do that here over the next stretch of games. Hey, Coach Lissa, we got time for just one more question. But uh, as Ken said a little earlier, it makes it easy for you to root for now. Now that Rushi doesn't have to run into you anymore, so best of luck <laughs> on that tonight and on that tournament trail. But you know, once all this is over, once basketball season is over, uh, do you get a chance to relax a little bit, or, or what else occupies your time? Yeah, I'll definitely uh, get a little bit of time to relax. Uh, you know, I've got three boys who are who are real active in various sports and activities, and uh, so I get to devote a little bit more time to being dad and just spending time with them. But uh, uh, you know, basketball is a year-round sport these days, so it won't be long before we uh, we start getting off-season plans and schedules uh, for next year. Well, listen, Coach. Uh, you know, we appreciate you getting up early on this Valentine's morning. I'm sure you got a big day ahead of you. You know, you may have a special lunch planned or something with someone <laughs> special. I, I'm not sure, but I know you got a game tonight. So uh, hopefully you can bring home a W at least on Valentine's night for sure. And, uh, you know, best of luck to the Rockets in the tournament trail. Well, I, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me on, and, uh, and thanks for covering our student-athletes throughout the year, guys. Thanks, Absolutely. Coach. All right, that was the head coach of the Annalady Rockets, Jeff Maurer, in just his second season, Ken, and uh, got a very good team over there. He's done very well these last two years. Yes, he has, Craig. Uh, you know, great interview. Uh, he did a uh, very good job right there. You can tell he's a uh, he's uh, uh, you know he's a teacher of the game. Uh, you know, he's been at it a long time. Like you said, he's very active in the school system over there. Coaches a lot of different things. Uh, great for the kids, and uh, congratulations to him on his success that he's had this year again. Yeah, and just one senior over there, a very good senior at that, mm-hmm. but just one senior. He's mm-hmm. going to have a lot of talent coming back mm-hmm. next year, mm-hmm. and I'm sure the other teams in the Shelby County Athletic League are like, whoa, mm-hmm. this Rocket team is going to be good for a while. I'd say the top two teams in the Shelby County League and the girls' side are uh, pretty blessed for next year. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, let's go back to the sound room here this morning and check in with TK and Heavy D. And Good morning, guys. And, and, and you know, TK, this is the last week of the regular season for the boys uh, you know the girls are in tournament play, and your SCAL athlete of the week. It's starting to. It's going to start narrowing down because teams are going to start falling off here as we go week by week. Yeah, it's getting a little tougher. Um, one of the uh, sports that we haven't touched on is is where I'm looking this week, and I know Press Pros is starting to try to dip their toes into it. Uh, we don't see too much in the uh, Sydney Daily News. I, I'm not sure if that's the newspaper or coaches reporting, but we're going with the bowling this week. And we're staying home here in Rushi. The Rushi Raiders were led into the district this week by none other than senior bowler Savannah Albers. She rolled a mighty 591. Whoa. Um, whoa. I know a lot of us playing a little couples once a month <laughs> league or group, group get together. And even when we pay eight pin no tap, <laughs> none of us can touch 591. No. That's uh, the truth. Just a heck of a day for Savannah. Congratulations on that. She led her Raiders into the district. She had fifth overall. The Raiders get ninth and just get in there as a team. Uh, She did a 183, or rather 186, 256, and then a little bit of a hangover went 141 in the last. 256. uh, 256. (laughs) So she was on fire. Uh, Again, congratulations, Savannah. Good luck to the Rushi Raiders. Uh, That's a heck of a way to get into the district. So. We'll keep watching them, and maybe we'll get another Star of the Week or Athlete of the Week, but uh, a heck of a day for her and for her team. Yeah, it's been a little while since we covered bowling. I think we used to have Rushi coach uh, Keith Bowman. Uh, uh-huh. he, he helped yep. us out a couple years ago with uh, a couple bowling interviews. Certainly a sport that uh, gets a lot of participation and seems to be getting bigger year by year. Absolutely. That's a great call, TK. I like uh, seeing the recognition uh, there for the Lady Raider bowling team, and especially Savannah Albers there knocking out a 256. That's just phenomenal. That is a great score. And Heavy D, does the uh, mailman come on Valentine's Day? I'm not really sure if they, they, they deliver the mail today or not. He does. You know, I'll tell you what, TK, I get excited when I break 100. So <laughs> I can't imagine a 256. But, uh, 
Yeah, this, this question's wrong in about four or five different ways, <laughs> but uh, we'll give it a shot anyhow. Uh, Dear Heavy, is TK your Valentine? <laughs> well, and uh, if so, did you get him something for Valentine's Day? Well, the answer is he is not my Valentine, but I did do some bro research on the internet, and TK, I know you don't like tequila, and it does not like you, and I know you're not a big fan of vegetables, so we'll stay clear of that, but uh, something I think you might like is uh, a little heart-shaped <laughs> basket. Uh, surprise, well, it's me. Well, that's nice. Surprise, it's me. And there's all kind of varieties <laughs> in there. There's bacon, there's pork, and there's some jerky and all kind of stuff. I think TK uh, that's can good, probably, stuff. probably sink yeah. his teeth into yeah. something right there. Is, is that the uh, kind of meat you can, it, it'll be around next year and it's still good? Yeah, yeah, it might be. You can probably take that to Mars with you. So, you know, we don't have a bromance starting here back in uh, the sound room. Uh, but if we did, I would get him some uh, It's Meat it's surprise. Meat. Yeah. I think it's like wine and Heart bourbon. Shape. The longer it sits, the better it gets. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> Gosh, now you make me jealous, Heavy D. I'm kind of hoping that uh, <laughs> my uh, Valentine might give me some uh, surprise It's Meat. It might be a good gift. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, okay? All right, great stuff, guys. Thanks for that. And with that, it's going to wrap up our show. Fortunately for uh, us, we're, 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 it's time to go. But uh, I do want to say special thanks to our guest, Coach Jeff Maurer, for joining us this morning, as well as the viewers out there for tuning in. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a great day, everyone. Hanging at the fish report. 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 Before you lay this news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report, hey.